When you pray, you rise to meet in the air those who are praying at that very hour, and whom, save in prayer, you may not meet. So prayer joins you to a community. This idea is very common in, in Christian theology. The three aspects of God, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is not just an individual experience of being uplifted, but it's also a collective experience. In fact, Christ says this directly. Any time two or more of you meet in my name, I am there with you. So in a similar way, when you pray, you're joining yourself to a collective experience. There's a quote-unquote Holy Spirit that dwells in all believers. You ignite it in yourself when you begin to pray. And that Holy Spirit unites all of those praying as one single body. And they're people that you would never otherwise meet. So this is obviously a very poetic idea. Is there something real in it? Is there some aspect of this that is tangible to the one who prays? Of joining a community, even on your own. The hermit, sitting in his rocky cell, engages in prayer. Does he feel alone in that time? This is once again this idea, as he touched on in the beginning, what is prayer but the expansion of yourself into the living ether? You are expanding yourself. You become something larger than just this body, mind and intellect. So now he's continuing to talk about the approach to prayer. He started off by talking about it as exhausting your distress. Spoke about it as being an expression of your gratitude. He says, therefore, let your visit to that temple of prayer be for naught but ecstasy and sweet communion. So again, the idea of communion is that you are becoming part of something larger than yourself. It's the effacement of the ego. It's the effacement of that belief around being just this one body, mind, intellect. You feel that you are something larger. And when that happens, the concerns and demands of just this body, mind, and intellect, they take on a smaller perspective. They fade into the distance a little bit. There is that relief from the persecution of believing I am only this body, mind, intellect, with all of its desires and attachments and expectations. Sweet communion. And this idea of ecstasy. When the ego is removed, what remains is yourself. And all through the Vedic texts, it talks about this as being absolute bliss. 